Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. I've been making LEGO videos for 6 years and have featured dozens of different remote controlled LEGO vehicles, both stock and custom. If I had a dollar for every time someone asked me in the comments why I didn't buy a Traxxas or other RC car for the same price as the expensive LEGO I could probably buy a life-size Ford Bronco instead of this here. I've been wanting to do this video for a while and it's actually not going to be a single video but it is part of a series. You know, the series that is all about my adventures with 3D printers and other gadgets. Good news, there will also be some RC cars. I can say that I have a lot of experience with LEGO, motorization and RC sets and I have a, shall we say, moderate or basic knowledge of hobby grade RC cars. If you are a black belt LEGO fan, then this video probably won't have much new things for you and if you are someone who builds RC cars day and night, then you could easily find some inaccuracies but that's not the point. Today, I want to give you an overview of these two types of RC toys, what their main categories are, what you can expect from each and why I don't think one is just better than the other. Each product featured in the video is linked in the description, now let's get started. First, let's take a look at LEGO. When I returned to the hobby after my dark ages, power functions was the way to motorize LEGO sets. This system consisted of various motors, a couple of battery boxes and a separate infrared receiver and a remote control. This system was very easy to assemble and use, but due to the limitations of infrared control it wasn't particularly sophisticated. It worked somewhat better for heavy machinery and trains, cars had no proportional steering or speed control, range was limited and it was virtually useless in direct sunlight. I won't go into further detail here, just wanted to set the baseline. Then about 5 years ago a new generation of LEGO electronics came along, the powered up system. The naming is confusing because the Technic sets with these parts are labeled Control Plus, which is also the name of the app that goes with it, but there is also an app called Powered Up that controls some other non-Technic sets and lets you create your own custom code, but it doesn't help you with that in any way, seriously. LEGO released quite a few Control Plus sets in the last few years, you can see them all here. There are also other motorized sets like trains and a few others that aren't remote controlled. I'm going to focus on the RC Technic sets now. Each of these sets has a control profile in the app, so a smart device is a must to use them. The app uses Bluetooth connection, the range is ok but not outstanding and the touch control is cumbersome. In theory, you can create a control profile for the sets in the powered up app and use the train remote, but it doesn't have proportional controls with those buttons and you still need a smart device to act as a bridge. Some of them have advanced features like the leap hair excavator with many moving parts, the Zetros with locking differentials or the Volvo with a 3-speed gearbox. From a performance perspective they are somewhat limited. About a year ago I made this video showing most of these sets with the exception of the latest track transformation vehicle. The buggy is pretty fast, the others range somewhere between slow, moderately slow and barely moving forward. Some of them are pretty powerful, some can climb impressive inclines, but in general they are still intended for indoor use and aren't very durable. That doesn't mean you can't use them outdoors, but in their original state their performance is only average, the plastic can be easily scratched and it's really hard to find lost parts in the grass. Speaking of standard form, here's a controversy from a LEGO mindset perspective. LEGO is supposed to be about creativity and customization, but you can't change the configuration of these sets, you can't even add a light or swap out a motor if you want to use the original control profiles, they just won't work. If you want to customize something, you have to find alternatives. There is the powered up app that was supposed to fill this gap, but since its introduction about 5 years ago, there is still no documentation and for a very inexplicable reason, LEGO as a company makes no effort in this area. The app is available, there's a very slow development happening somewhere in the background, but its practical usability is questionable. However, there are some great third party alternatives, such as the Brick Controller 2 app. This one requires a game controller that you can connect to your smart device and use to control these sets much more precisely than the touchscreen solution. The downside is that you still need a smart device that acts as a bridge between the controller and the vehicle. If you know how to code, if you know Python to be exact, there is a great alternative firmware for LEGO Electronics called Pybricks. It's compatible with more devices than any of the official LEGO apps and you can even run the code on the hubs themselves so you can use the remote directly without needing your smartphone. The downside is that Pybricks only runs on LEGO hardware so you can't pair such a remote and you will need at least some basic programming skills to understand how to use the examples you will find online. 
That was the part where we still have these sets in their original stock form. But LEGO is all about imagination and building, so let's see how we can pimp them up. You can actually do several things. First, you can modify the official sets, such as swapping out a few gears on this off-roader. This will make it slower, but it will make it a pretty capable crawler. You can also change the appearance, for example, build your own custom body with additional accessories. There's also the option of taking a LEGO set that doesn't contain electronics and make it remote controlled. I've done this several times in the past and it's really fun to bring these sets to life. But the possibilities are really endless. You can take a remote controlled set and another LEGO set and create something completely different than the RC, like this awesome Ford Bronco here, built with parts from both of these sets. And of course, you can build completely custom vehicles. And if you are not happy with the performance of the stock LEGO motors and power sources, you can use third-party options like boobies, units and motors. This one can drive power functions motors, this one can drive both powered up and power functions motors, and run them at higher voltage. It also requires app control, but you can also use the Brick Controller 2 app I mentioned earlier. So, as you can see, there are many possibilities beyond the stock experience that remote-controlled LEGO sets can offer you nowadays. What about the prices? Due to the relatively short life cycle of LEGO sets, some of them are already retired. The cheapest one you can officially get now is the Transformation Vehicle for 150 bucks, and the Zetros is 330 US dollars on LEGO.com. Retailers usually have discounts, and you can buy most older sets used on sites like Bricklink, which is like the eBay of LEGO sets and parts. Third-party offerings like the Boobies units or motors can be purchased directly from the manufacturer. But what about the other side? The RC hobby world is huge, I won't even try to list everything, just give you a few main categories that you can easily find as a beginner. There are also tons of different RC cars, crawlers, buggies, these are just a few examples. If you are looking for a cheap RC vehicle, you can find plenty of toys at your local supermarket. These are usually not very reliable, but they're more for kids who want to have fun around the house or in the backyard. If you are willing to spend a little more money, you can also buy more serious machines with impressive capabilities, there are many online sources for them. Here's an example that comes from EngineDIY.com. These buggies are available from a dozen different manufacturers. It has four-wheel drive, it is small but quite agile, it is really fun to play with. I don't think it can really run at 40 km per hour as advertised, but it's definitely fast for a toy. The downside is durability. My son had a similar model where the inner gears broke very quickly. On the other hand, you can easily find replacement parts online. Then there are brands that aren't from US or Europe, but have gained some reputation among fans in recent years and offer RC vehicles at a reasonable price. WPL is one of them, I've had good experiences with their products. You can either buy an RTR, ready to run kit, with everything you need, charge your battery and go, or you can buy the same vehicle as a kit and build it yourself. This category already has a huge world of customization, you can upgrade, change accessories, there are tons of options, at a price of course. These vehicles are fun and easy to control even for kids, and if you are more serious, you can buy tons of upgrade parts, quickly doubling or tripling the amount you spent on the vehicle itself. And then there are the big brands, Traxxas, Tomia, Arma, HPI, Lossy and so on. I decided to buy some RC vehicles from Traxxas simply because these products and their accessories are readily available in Europe. They aren't quite cheap, not at all, but at least available. These are decent RC vehicles. The little Bronco, the TRX4M, costs only $150 in the US, but was more like $250 here in Hungary. It's a great little machine, quite capable out of the box. It's fun to drive around indoors, but you can also do some surprising tricks with it outdoors. And then there's the big brother, the TRX4 Bronco. Two-speed gearbox, remotely lockable front and rear differentials, great looks, a real beast. In the US it costs $500 without battery and charger, in this country unfortunately it's more like $800. I bought it for trailing and crawling, although it can be pretty fast even with a 2S LiPo. But I really want to keep it slow and capable on this course, so I had to get something cheaper as a fast basher. Here's the slash. I haven't even opened it up yet, you can get it for around $200 already and it seems like a lot of fun. There are dozens of brands of course and each brand has tons of models, you can buy the same chassis with a Defender body for example. No, it's not mine, but a friend saw the Bronco and really had to get one. If you want to build something yourself, you can buy the same vehicles as a kit or you can try to mix and match the components. So, everything here is faster, 
stronger, with a remote that has much better range and easier to use, most people would say nothing here is worth the money compared to these. Well, I think LEGO still has a magic trick that's hard to beat, versatility. There is a huge aftermarket for these RC cars with original and third-party accessories. You want wheel weights for your TRX4M? Here they are. New rims? Sure. Light bar? Check. But you really need to pay attention to compatibility. These custom rims need these stock tires, they will not fit the same size tires from the same third-party manufacturer. The wheel weights are the same. If I want to convert the body of my Bronco to, let's say, the classic Bronco, I have to buy special accessories in addition to the body, despite the same TRX4 model, because the chassis of this model is about 1cm longer than this one and a lot of things just don't match. So, there are really lots of options for customization and conversion, but you really need to get the exact specific parts for your vehicle and you can spend a really nice amount of money on upgrade parts. The LEGO world is a little bit different. If you want to upgrade or modify a model, you can use pretty generic parts to do it and every piece can be bought separately or can come from another set. Here's this originally white rally car and this NASCAR race car that you can also rebuild with orange parts. This race truck looks cool, but it looks even cooler with a massive wing, you can simply build one. It's now a trend to build alternative models from official sets. On Rebricable.com you can find dozens of options. Here's the Land Rover Defender. If you want something different, you can build a Willys Jeep with the same parts. Or you can even combine sets to get something else. You have the RC Off-Roader and the Defender, you can build a remote control Jeep Bruiser. You have the Ford F-150 Raptor and the Mercedes Zetros. Here's a remote controlled Ford Bronco designed to use the parts from those. I find this system much more versatile if you want to change, upgrade or add something or build something completely different with the same components. So let's try to sum things up. If you want something remote controlled to just play with, preferably outdoors, then choose one of these depending on your budget and personal preferences. This little Bronco is even fun to play with indoors, you will definitely have to go outside with the others. Upgrades and customizations are definitely possible, but be prepared to spend a lot of money. If you want to build something but there are no plans to change anything afterwards, you simply want to know what's in it and then play with it, I still recommend some of the RC kits. WPL kits are great for a smaller budget, but there are also a lot of options in the more serious league. But if you are a builder, a tinkerer and want to mix and match different sets, different vehicles, build, play, rebuild and have fun, then I suggest to go with LEGO. New instructions are released by talented fans almost daily. If you have a few popular sets, you have literally dozens of options to build. And of course, the system encourages you to come up with your own solutions, modify something or design from scratch. You do have to accept the limitations of the system, because these machines aren't as powerful or fast as these ones, but in some cases you will be surprised and they can still be a lot of fun. But, and to prove once again that nothing is black or white, I wouldn't go too far by adding lots of expensive electronics and then having something that is far less capable than a real RC counterpart at the same price. This custom buggy I built a few years ago has about 400 euros worth of electronics in it. I've reused them in several other builds of course, so it's fine with me, but as a single RC car to keep, I would rather buy something like this for a much better price. So folks, that was my first and not so short summary trying to compare the basics of these two worlds. We won't stop here of course, I plan to do some fair and probably not so fair comparisons showing how LEGO RC vehicles can run outdoors, which ones will give you the most fun for a certain budget and what these RC cars can offer compared to them. If you have ideas for content like this, please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.